What's going on guys? Hype here. Um, just finished watching uh, Alpha Omega Sin's video um, about what he would uh, do different and change about uh, GameStop as a company. And I just wanted to add a few things and I guess I agree with him on, on almost everything he said um, on his list. Uh, one thing I would do is I agree with is pay the associates more or the employees more. Um, I had just did a video about my pickups and I was kind of talking about that same situation in my experience I had at the three game stops I have today. Um, when I worked at Best Buy, they did the same thing. You always started off as a cashier and they made you, even though they didn't technically work for, uh, what do you call it, a commission, you still did because like at Best Buy, you had those always those little service plan, the PRP, product replacement plan, PSP, service plan. And then they always pushed like new, um, Entertainment Weekly and I forgot the other one. But they always had magazine subscriptions. I don't know if they still do it. I don't really shop at Best Buy that much anymore. Um, but if we didn't get a certain amount of those replacement plans and magazine subscriptions, um they cut our hours and literally because I didn't want to lie to customers because what they do is they'd have us tell them oh you you qualify for a free subscription to Entertainment Weekly or uh, Sports Illustrated all you got to do is just swipe your credit card um, to confirm your uh, identity and and you'll receive your your free subscription but what you don't tell them is they are going to get charged for it they locked in their credit card and right after that that um, free trial is up they aren't going to get charged. Um, so I wasn't doing that and I wasn't getting the subscriptions that I needed. So I went from having normal part-time hours to like one to two days a week. Um, and it was just, it was, it was stupid. And I see, I think GameStop does that to their employees. That's why they get so pushy with pre-orders and, and stuff like that. Um, I'm assuming the ones that get all the pre-orders and push people into, I, I guess, bully people into pre-ordering games and stuff like that, they uh, get more hours and maybe get more money down the road. Um, so yeah, pay pay your uh, employees more. Um, second thing is, you got Movie Stop and you got GameStop, you know, and supposedly they're two different companies with just a similar name. But I've always wondered, like, like um, Alpha was talking about making a bigger store. Um, you know, they should do that. They should close down the weaker small stores or merge them, like take the employees from one and another, put them together in one bigger location, in a in a better location, and and not have as many little stores. Only keep like the little ones that are doing well. Um, and maybe even instead of, uh, you know, keep the little ones that are doing well for like the newer stuff and then maybe have a like GameStop, like he said, GameStop Plus or GameStop Outlet where all the back stock that would normally get, um, field destroyed or thrown out or they couldn't even have, they could load up in these stores and sell for a cheaper price. Um... As well as carry retro games and, and movies and everything. And that goes with what I was just saying. Why not have GameStop and MovieStop merge together? Um, one company. Like Electronics Boutique used to sell movies and games. And, you know, because I've always... I, there's There's been times like um, where I've traded in a lot of movies at MovieStop, but there was nothing I wanted. And I even asked them when I first first found out about them, I can't use my credit over at GameStop. And I can't use my GameStop credit at MovieStop. But it would be nice if I could just, you know, they, they'd own each other and they'd merge the companies. But you could still have the separate stores, but you can also have stores together. And if I trade my movies in at MovieStop, I can get games at GameStop. Or if I trade my games at GameStop, I can get movies at MovieStop. Because it's one company. And Electronic Boutique did that when they were taking movies um, a while back. But the only thing they did is they did a crappy ass job at checking the discs. And then they stuck all those freaking stickers of like giant yellow stickers and stickers over the side and stickers everywhere. Like I, In my opinion, GameStop does it. But 
the electronics boutique was worse at sticking stickers all over the damn movies and, and games and everything like that. It was just so annoying. Um, another thing that uh, I, I'm, I think that should be different, and I've always wondered, I had a conversation about it with a manager today, is why, because um, to be honest with you, between me and Alpha, uh, he's just, he basically kind of described play and trade um, like GameStop should be a lot more like play and trade because now they don't have arcade games but the the one play and trade I did go to around here had a back room with those long tables and chairs with a screen set up and people could get, go back there and like do multiplayer like online playing games and stuff like that I did notice that for every section in their store, even though there's a small store, they had a TV and a system set up, and you could play the game or try it, and they'd have, like, games already on, in the, on the system that you could play. Um, they were knowledgeable. Uh, yeah, it's a, franch it's a franchise, and it's not a corporate company, so the, the dude, who, whoever opens the franchise, probably does know about games, and he put his money into it, but I don't know. I've had a better experience with playing trade than GameStop. But plan trades are, I think there's just one now left around here. But I do know that plan trade even offers disc resurfacing um, as an option in their store. And for a big company like GameStop to not have a disc surfacing machine, resurfacing machine, and not offer that service is kind of weird. And I, a little girl, before I even asked, um, probably like four years old, asked, Oh, you don't, uh, you don't have the machine to clean the scratches off the disc. And then the girl, the manager, had mentioned, "Oh, well, I can't. We, the company can't afford that. It's four thousand dollars a machine, and if you add that up by how many stores, that's millions of dollars that they have to spend on the actual machines to do resurfacing. But you wouldn't be throwing out as many games and and stock." if you had a resurfacing machine. Um, that's what I'm thinking. And also, you have people coming in paying you $4 a game to get resurfaced. Because I know playing trade around here uh, is $3.99 a, a disc to get um, your game resurfaced. And I know they sell, uh, I know Cobra Timmy just bought the same machine I've seen for like $159. Even GameStop sells that machine uh, um, on their website. I, I was surprised to see that. But when I brought it up to them in the store, she didn't know what I was talking about. She thought I was talking about Skip Doctor, that little uh, grinding thing. So, I don't know. Um, yeah, I, I mean, accepting retro games would be a big step. Like I said, you don't have to have it in every store. But if you're going to make a bigger store, like merge Movie Stop, GameStop together, carry movies carry retro game uh, xbox playstation 2 uh gamecube genesis super nintendo nes you know i mean there's always a cutoff because i even know playing trade um didn't carry like obscure systems um i i don't know if they i don't know if they carried turbo but i know they didn't carry like 3do or anything like that um and they didn't take it either i, I had brought my system in I, I regret doing it but i brought my system in and they didn't accept it they said they couldn't they didn't have a market for it or something. Um, but yeah, take accept retro games. Hire more knowledgeable people. Train your people the right way. Um, and and also, you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna have someone there, have a technician. I mean, a lot of these places, um, mom and pop shops, either learned on their own or have someone working there that knows how to fix systems or clean them and, and take them apart and know the ins and outs of them. Do that. Um, it's just, it's just crazy that GameStop even lasted as long as it did because I think Play and Trade would have did a better, uh, would have lasted longer than them. But I, I know the prices were higher at Play and Trade being that it was a, it was a franchise and not a corporate company. Um, as far as like uh, GameStop opening the games, we all know that, yeah, that I, I mean, I found their little planner things that everybody was finding and it lists a little sheet in there you can check in and check out games so yeah uh, they they take new games they open them then they rent them out to the people that work there and then they put them back on the shelf as new um a friend of mine uh went to go buy a sniper and he wanted it brand new it was advertised brand new for a low price and they tried to sell him a new new copy open already 
when there was an already sealed copy there um and he had to like actually stop the guy and, and tell him no i want a sealed copy i don't want the open copy and they've done the same to me even with used games um they'll always push the, the loose disc on you if and and see your reaction first like i think it was i was buying like god of war ascension um blaze blue or in a couple other games and in two of them i know it was god of war and crisis or something like that for the ps3 they had i saw him open a drawer and he had copies with the manual and the case and then you know you bring the case up to the register um he he instead pushes the loose copy on me in, a, in one of those cheap plastic black cases i said no i want the game if i'm paying for the game i want the game with the case that i brought up here in the manual and it was like he he had to pause and 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 look around real quick like he had to get permission to do it i'm buying a game from you and you have one it's common decency to give me the game with the case and everything in it not take the case that i brought up and then give me just a disc and i don't like that and it goes hand in hand with what alpha uh, was talking about with throwing out the cases yeah i'm a dumpster diver you can see behind me everything i found but I'm, I do it because I saved this stuff from going to the landfill, but I'd rather still see it on the shelves, people buying it. Walmart does it. Um, I, I work for Walmart. They they have their little, cl their little case with all the new games in it, but once they get to a certain price, like usually it's $20, they move outside the case to the shelf where you can just take them off, $19.99, and once they get lower than that, they go into the bins and, you know, and so on and so forth. They have a process and they sell their back stock even towards um like i think a month ago or two um all the leftover stuff from last year black friday christmas all that stuff even like the playstation move guns and stuff like that they had them all on tables like throughout the middle of the store everything was on clearance and it started off you know normal clearance towards the end walmart wanted to get rid of it all they they put a lot of stuff toys video games everything for a dollar i literally got like stuff for a dollar to three dollars um and it's sold like that and that's still money in their pocket you understand it's not going to the garbage and not making anything on it so yeah again gamestop's such a small store that their back room is even tinier and they can't hold a lot of uh back stock so what they do is either they ship it around till they sell it or they just feel destroy it all and technically Feel, technically feel destroyed because some places don't even do that they're just tossing in the dumpster um walmart example food well for food they caught on to feeding america and what it what it is is they any like the baked goods and stuff like that that are still good instead of throwing them out or any even groceries and stuff canned goods denny cans stuff like that they donated to feeding america but they get a write-off and they technically get their money back so they're donating and they're getting their money back. Now, why can't you figure out something with all these cases and games and headsets you're throwing out that you can donate them, get a write off, and get your money back? It, it, it just doesn't make any sense to me. But, and you know, I'm not going to complain too much because I benefited from it for being a dumpster diver. Um, but yeah, like, it, it's, it's, it, it's a lot of stuff. I remember Microplay. I don't know if, if anybody in other states had it, but Microplay. Um, Rhino Games, Play and Trade, um, I can't even think of some of the other stores. And I know I, I did a lot of buying, and, um, and they, I know Microplay carried 3DO games um, a while back. Uh, Rhino Games, very knowledgeable people, very friendly people, go in there and talk about games. Even they had the guy, the store guy, buying stuff from me, like on the side, like Wonder Swan, um, other stuff. You know, they had their policy still, but they carried everything. They didn't throw out boxes. I remember I traded in a Nintendo system. I regret it. Uh, the complete in box one. And he actually took it. And it was um, when I when I got the money for it, he put it on the top, you know, like where GameStop puts all those empty boxes that have the prices. So he put it up there, displayed it for sale and everything. And I know if you would have took that to GameStop... They would have took the system out of the box, the controller, threw the box in the garbage, all this kind of shit. It's just, it's crazy. Like, it's wasteful, it's crazy. And GameStop has a hold on the on the used game market with that. 
uh, the opening of the new games so they can charge more for it basically so that's just the main thing about it they can take a, a, a $40 game open it put it on the shelf as used and then sell it for 60 or 70 dollars like they did with Xenoblade even though it went down in price now they kind of learned their lesson that no one was going to pay that for that game um, just a lot of stuff you know I mean, they do have their good qualities but they have a lot of more bad qualities than anything um, that whole mobile thing is going to flop on them. The uh, closing GameStop stores or keeping the name GameStop and turning them into um, mobile tablet and cell phone stores. There's so many of those shits. A uh, dime a dozen. All the little hole in the wall ones that sell like Metro PCS and all that. Then you got like the AT&T and the Verizon, the Sprint, the T-Mobile. And, and now they're going to sell Cricket and something else. Um... It's just, it's not going to work out for them. They need to stick to what they know, and that's video games. And in and, and technically movies, too. You know, they 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 had they had a hold. If they can get Movie Stop to join with them, they have a hold on, on movies and games, then it, it would be, like, the perfect, like, combination, in my opinion. And, and you'd get more business, because I can buy movies from you. I can buy games. I can buy both. I can trade them in. You and I can trade games in and movies in, and I can get both, and it doesn't matter. Not, not I have to go to one store two feet down and trade in movies there and get credit, and then I have to come back over here and trade in game. Why can't I just do it all in one central location? That's why Walmart, Target, Best Buy, they're doing a lot better with that because hey, I can go trade in my game collection for 500 bucks at Walmart get a $500 gift card and I mean shit, Walmart sells everything groceries electronics clothes everything I need cleaning supplies so now I can go shop for what I need I can use it to go get gas at Murphy's gas station you know what I'm saying like you got to be more versatile to survive especially when you have big companies like Walmart and Target Sam's Club I mean, I mean Best Buy eh, you know, I don't know. Um, I have a feeling Best Buy is going to be going down the tube sooner or later. I used to be so excited to go in there, and I don't know. It's just like a blase experience now. It's not. I, when I used to work there, it was a lot more like I'd like to go walk around, see everything. Their audio depart, car audio department was always exciting to me, and now it's all just bleh. I don't even care. Like, everything's gotten smaller, so. I don't know. That's just my opinion on stuff. I, I'm gonna I'm I tag um, Alpha Omega Sin in this. Hopefully, he watches it and lets me know how he feels. Um, like I said, I agree with him 100%. Um, they need to carry retro games. They need to pay their associates more. They just, they should have some bigger stores. I think they should merge with Movie Stop um, and combine the two. Um, they just need to to I don't know like not be so cutthroat and pushy like they need to be more for the gamers and not about the money like you make your money but you know be more and i'm not i know not all stores are like that because i know like cobra timmy um pointed out he goes into his GameStop and talks to them they're cool but there's a lot of them it's just like not to sound like like i'm picking on a certain aspect but the one guy the first guy i went to i've had experience with him before Drives a big old fancy car, comes in, he looks like like some metrosexual guy. Looks like he knows nothing really about games. When you talk to him, he acts like he's better than you. He just keeps it short and to the point and wants to get you the hell out of his store. And you ask him to do something, looks like he's you're like pulling teeth with him. And then like um, I asked about transferring games. They do that. Um, they can take a game from New Jersey and transfer it to Florida if you ask, and both stores agree. They have to contact each other. Oh, no, we don't do that. That's what he tells me. Oh, no, we can't do that. Why? Because it's a headache for him, so he's telling me to go fuck myself. I like that. And um, same experience in another one. So I'm just trying to have a conversation with the guy, the cashier. And uh, I'm telling him I'm from Lando Lakes, and I'm in Tampa. And you, they had a game I wanted down here, so I came down to get it. And I pre-ordered um, Castlevania, but they didn't have any of the po posters left over at the one I got. I didn't know there was a poster. So I asked him, I said, what, what posters are those that you guys are giving out? He told me Castlevania. I said, well, I pre-ordered it, and I didn't get the poster. 
And I was just like, well, can I say, I said I should go, I'm probably going to go back and ask if they can get it for me or whatever at the store I pre-ordered it. Because apparently GameStops are in competition with each other, even though it's a, a whole company, corporate company together. Like, um, Walmart for me is, I mean, each store, you know, makes their sales and everything. And they do give awards out for better stores, but we're a whole company, you know what I'm saying? With, with with GameStop, it's like they are playing trades, like they're franchises. They're competing with each other. They talk bad about each other's stores. Um, they try to take the business from each other's stores. Uh, it's, it's crazy. So, anyways, I told them, I said, I'm a, I'll probably go back and ask for the poster. But can I see what the poster looks like? Because I've never seen it. And there was a, a box of them sitting there. And he basically, oh, no, you need to go back to the city where you got your game from and, and tell them to give you your poster. He basically just told me, like, fuck off <laughs> and he didn't say it in a funny way and my friend was with me too and i'm just i'm looking at him like i should just tell him to fuck this i'm not even gonna buy any games from you you know it's, it's like I, I don't know like they they think oh i got a job at gamestop so i'm like a, a game expert now why because you get little little trinkets and and doodads and, and little pins and lanyards and stuff that makes you a gamer come on bro really anyways they need to change their attitude because I noticed, like in my store, in my job, yeah, Walmart gets a lot of flag. But if a, com a customer comes in, you gotta be nice to them. You gotta treat them right. Even though I know a lot of people say that they have bad experience at Walmart, but I'm just telling you how they come down on us. And then uh, on top of that, if a customer complains, well, I'm gonna hear about it. I've complained before at GameStop, and they stick up for each other over there. They act like, oh, well, this guy doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. So they just kind of like bullshit you out the door, and they let the guy slide. Eh, I don't want to hear nothing about them having a hard time standing around all day behind a register talking about video games when I'm over there busting my ass, lifting heavy-ass boxes and shit, and I still got to be nice to freaking idiotic customers and people asking questions and weirdos and all kinds of shit. So I ain't trying to hear nothing from them. Um, as far as money wise, yeah, maybe they could say something about that, but I don't know. Anyways, this video has gotten a little bit too long, so those are my little pinpoints. Most of them are the same as Alpha and with a few differences and experiences. Um, let me know in the comments below how you feel, what you think should change, and um, yeah, just title your video um, what you think, uh, game, what, what would you change about GameStop? And then uh, tag it to uh, Alpha Omega Sin. Alright guys, I'm out. Peace.